Hey guys, welcome back. It's time to take a look at the Not A Real Error CGC Charizard 5.5 Error Deluxe. Uh, this is, I've already made a video on this. Uh, no, I did not see the E4 thread, but we're going to cover a lot of what the E4 thread was doing, what they were saying, while the, uh, I guess, previous to my first video on this. We're, we're going to go through all the info, uh, and I am going to show you some absolute proof towards the end here. I uh, kind of held it back because CGC was reviewing reviewing this bad boy so with uh with cgc requesting to get this back uh we knew it had to be a few different options either they actually wanted to check to see if it was an error because they had all the information from my video they had all the information that uh story of brian the original owner of this who was claiming that they peeled a lamination off of this bad boy they purchased the card um, and it had uh, it was laminated by a child at some point years ago uh, when they bought the collection. They pulled it off. I do not think this was like a malicious thing to fool anyone into thinking this was an error. Uh, this is just a damaged card, and it should have been always treated as such. I would assume that that was the... I don't think anyone involved in this entire situation had bad intentions. I think CGC was lazy. I think uh, there there are a lot of mistakes made that led this into being more than what it needed to be. Uh, but regardless, I, I think we, we got we to gotta blame CGC for this for the most part. So, them wanting this card back, what does that tell us? And if you guys want the, I guess, the, a, a pre prequel to this bad boy you can uh, watch the video down in the description pause this one go watch that one i'll put a link up above my head i'm doing the hand wiggly thing so i know where to insert the uh the link to that i suggest you watch that first but then we're going to go through the information here uh I, I don't think you need to watch the other video but i would suggest doing so if you want the entirety of the story uh and the context of the post that we're going to take a look at uh regardless i had enough information to know to knowingly state uh, that almost certainly, without a shadow of a doubt, this this was not an actual error card. Uh, just the the amount of information and uh, things that are were shown beforehand. Even though we could not, we didn't have the direct evidence that the the actual peel of this particular card. Uh, Story of Brian did post pictures of other cards that had had the same kind of treatment uh, done to them. Different scenario, different looking cards. So uh, of course, we we have the the person that purchased this and regraded it uh, with. CGC, uh, of course, they want to believe that this is an, an actual error card because it means that they are financially going to get their dick sucked. They're gonna they're gonna get it sucked up and down dollar bills every day, all day, uh, and that's kind of what it comes down to. So that's probably why they were defensive about it. I don't believe that they were trying to mislead CGC in any way. They probably thought this was an actual error. They thought they got a payday. They thought they scored on this bad boy, uh, but they didn't. It, it was just an oopsie doopsie CGC. And again, this is, I, I know we had to give CGC a little bit of a break after the double feature this week. Uh, we gave them a day off, but now we got to get back onto this because I think there's more missing details that you guys need to know. I suggest you watch through the entirety of this. Uh, I think it's an important learning lesson all around. But uh, here we go. It's still on the website, which is weird because they, spoiler alert, they, they kind of uh, went back on what they said. This is not an error anymore, even according to them. Uh, I don't think they actually looked at the card in any different way. I think just based on the information, they wanted to retrieve the card. They wanted it back. So uh, I think that's uh, that's what uh, they were doing. And again, I, I withheld something, uh, some some photos, a video that we're going to take a look at today because uh, I wanted to see what CGC said first. By the time I got this stuff, uh, the the uh, I, I guess it was already on the way back to them. So it would have been it would have been nice. I want to see what CGC had to say about this bad boy. If they were going to claim, if they were going to double down and say that, yes, it is an error, we were correct all along, then we could spit on their face. But I guess it's it's more likely that they just wanted the card back because it's embarrassing, which is odd because they still haven't removed it from their database. You would think that they would have uh, disabled this and removed the photo so that people couldn't refer back to it. Uh, this is a live live website here that we're looking at. This isn't like a saved image that I have to, to totally pizone them from Pizza Hut. Anyway, so we have the original listing here. It is a PSA 1. PSA graded this bad boy. Um, there's arguments to be made, like should PSA even be grading something that is this damaged? But at the same time, 
Uh, there are people that want PSA 1s. There's people that damage cards intentionally. I guess that can be an upcoming video. People that are intentionally damaging cards so that they'll get a 1 because there's a 1 premium. People like to think that they're getting something that is like played or whatever. There's nothing in the description. Uh, there was messed offer enabled on this bad boy when it existed. I don't think there's any way of seeing that it is or was on there. Uh, but regardless, we got a graded PSA 1 Charizard. Uh, 300 boners, which is a little high as somebody points out. But... Uh, th that's the thing. You can list anything for any amount of money. I don't think listing this for $300 is indicating that you're trying to deceive people into thinking this is an error card. I think this is just a price tag on there. And if you have best offer on it, maybe you just don't care if it sells right away. I have stuff lift listed on eBay that's too expensive, but it's because I don't want to sell it right now. I also don't want to remove the listing and then add it later. Or if you're sitting on something and you're just like, well, whenever the this gets up to this dollar value, uh, then whatever. If it sells, it sells. That's the thing. Or you're just seeing if, if somebody wants to offer on it because it's probably pretty hard to price a, a scraped, scraped ass, torn ass, um, laminated, removed Charizard. I'm sure there's a market for it out there somewhere. Um, I, and again, I don't think that that story of Brian was trying to deceive anyone that this was an error card. It's graded um, because I graded it. It's a, it's a damaged Charizard. That's what I see in this listing. I don't see, there's no mention. There's nothing in the actual like description or anything like that. It doesn't, it just says it's a one. It's damaged. That's it. PR, PR one. All right. So story of Brian uh, later posted on, um, and uh, he did reach out to the buyer who regraded it with CGC, uh, whether or not they received or noticed that, uh, that message or wanted to talk to them at that point in time. Uh, Story Brian made these posts uh, showing that yes, that was it was not an error card. Uh, so he didn't sell it as an error. It wasn't an error card. I, I, it wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, there is an argument if there was if there was somebody out there that was purposely doing this, purposely laminating and pulling it off and and, and trying to to pass it off as a as an error card. Yes, that is the bile. That is against all the rules of the internet of the Pokemon collecting community. And I would be absolutely dragging the living hell out of them for it. Uh, that is not the case here. This is not what's going on. Uh, and, and here are the other cards. We have a lot of Japanese cards from that same collection uh, that they posted photos of evidence that uh, yes, it was laminated beforehand. They couldn't find the particular Charizard, uh, but uh, they did have other photos of the, the Japanese cards seem to come off more in more of a uniform way, like the entire front of it. And then it just leaves that white layer, uh, which for anyone that isn't familiar, that's how Pokemon cards are printed. They put a white layer down to cover up the, the hollow foil. So when you have hollow foil, when you have bleed of sorts, usually it's because these layers and or the colored layers on top of that are, they're not opaque enough uh, to prevent that stuff from coming through. So you can see that there is a little bit of the, uh, the gray or black layer. Uh, I believe there are two different black black layers uh, that are added, gray or black layers. Uh, so some of it is left behind, very similar. So at this point in time, I'm hearing this from somebody that probably doesn't have much incentive to to say this, to, to say that, that it was a laminated card, it's not an error. Um, maybe they could be jealous, I guess, that they didn't realize it was an error. But when they start showing off all the other cards from that same collection, uh, I, I gotta I gotta believe that it's the case. It's Even though we don't have, at this point in time, the direct uh, chart Charizard P. Larino. Uh, we gotta we gotta believe that this is the same situation. So more Japanese cards here, and again they got that like a ghost ghost look. Um, all right, now let's get into the E4 thread. Uh, so to be uh, I guess uh, a little bit informative here, I didn't see the E4 thread. I don't have see I, I don't have time to to check E4 all the time uh, to see this thread, and I didn't see it before making my video. I just used the information at hand uh, and. Uh, and, you know, it, with CGC being as lazy as they have been, as eager to grade things, uh, the, even if c confirming authenticity on things that uh, that somebody hasn't even purchased to submit to them yet, uh, it, 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 it kind of all led down the path that uh, this was uh, this was not an error. They just graded it as an error. Uh, I saw the the, sh the shots of the other stuff. I, I put I put it all together. And yes, there was a small possibility that like Story of Brian could have been making the whole thing up. Uh, I I saw enough receipts. I saw that he owned it. I saw that it, that it was resubmit. I saw the other cards that were from that same collection. Uh, that just everything was adding up way too much. There was no inconsistency um, that that led me to believe that there was even a remote chance that this wasn't exactly what happened to that card. Uh, and 
and that's that's kind of where we led into it. That's why in the previous video I was so certain of the fact that uh, that it was it was not an error. Um, so uh, Dill, the the person who purchased and regraded it, uh, was not in contact with the seller. Um, so I think that's where the um, that that I guess some some mistakes could have been prevented uh, if if he just asked the the seller, hey, how was it damaged like this? Did it come like this? Were you the original owner? That kind of thing. The same thing that CGC should have done uh, if they're if they're trying to validate some kind of error, at least ask the person who bought it where they got it, and then you can the next person after that would have told you that it was laminated, and you could have not graded it and not embarrassed yourself. So uh, communication is key. I mean, even after, if you're scared that they're going to cancel the purchase because they didn't realize it was an error somehow, um, maybe you receive it and then you ask them for the Mac story on it. I, I guess that would be the, uh, the, the best course of action. Uh, but again, if, if you're just going to blindly put faith in CGC, uh, who is, remember, they're incentivized by grading this error crap that maybe it's not even an error, um, then you, you got to you gotta expect I don't know, like the blind faith in CGC. People were just like, oh, it's real. CGC said it was real. They do science. No, they don't do fucking science. They're trying to make your $20 a card or whatever the hell they charge now. And they're trying to make a name for themselves. I guess before the whole rename, relabel, whatever the hell um, they did recently, uh, they were just eager. They were just frothing and, and taking as many error cards up their butthole as possible so that they could uh, carve out that little niche market. Um, but that's the thing. When there's stuff that's hard to verify or impossible to verify, uh, then they're going to get themselves in trouble, and they most certainly did. So, the Dill. This is the original Dill post on April 19th. He says, looking to get some thoughts on this base set unlimited Charizard. I believe that it is printing error, though I've seen almost nothing like this previously. There is somewhat similar printing error. Fossil Dragonite listed on PWC, but they differ in many ways. Comments. The card has very few scratches slash wear on the front surface. It's not like any acetone cards that I've ever seen. Pictures don't do it justice. The hollow foil pattern can be seen across a large portion of the card in normal light. Notably, the black ink layer can be seen. Many of the words can be read through, uh, though much of the underlying cyan, yellow, magenta, CYM ink is missing. Those printing patterns that you see in the hollow foil box are real. So, again, I, I don't think there's any bad intent at this in in around this point in time uh he thinks he scored an awesome error card um and and it it wasn't all right Dale says small update on this i know psa only grades errors that are repeatable but i wanted to reach out to them to gauge their interests and thoughts they stated a card that was produced and released in a way that the manufacturer did not intend can only be recognized as an error card if there was a mass production of the error the manufacturer would need to recognize this mass error. Only then does PSA consider a card an error card. In this instance, it looks like it may be a one-off error. Unfortunately, PSA cannot recognize this as an error card. So um, I would imagine that this isn't like they didn't keep a log of this one individual card that was labeled as a one. Uh, they're just going based on what they see uh, or like a broad statement of how they treat error cards in general. So um, take this with like a, a huge grain of salt. This could be also just like some random representative that is, is there to copy paste stuff back to you. They also mentioned that graders will label cards that have been altered post-production, e.g. acetone, adding ink or color, trimming corners, etc. as authentic altered. In this case, the card was not giving an AA grade. This would suggest that the graders believed that the card was altered by the manufacturer and not by the consumer. Given this feedback, I decided to contact CGC about submitting this card for inspection as an error. I hope that they will agree to review the card and provide an expert opinion. Uh, so you got to remember, too, that like the first time that this went through PSA, this is probably, again, a, a 30 seconds or less minimum wage employee that's putting this fucker in a slab. That's what you're paying for. It's a damaged base set Charizard handled by somebody that is there i'm my apologies to the people that work there but you're not experts sorry not sorry all right next again so i mean this is like the whole thing with grading you just don't blindly accept the fact that they're they're going to tell you that there's experts doing expert things on your stuff they're not all right 
still small update the charizard is currently with cgc i will keep everyone posted and then we have like a vote going on here we got 53 percent of people think that it is not an error card um and again you can't really tell you're not looking at this um and again if there's this much uncertainty even within the people uh on e4 the people that are spending too much time looking at pokemon i would imagine the majority of the people that were in this thread the 30 voters that were here voting on this uh, would not accept a, a, a grading, an entry-level grading job at any of these companies. Keep that in mind. So, uh, a 50% error chance. Should we put that on the slab, on the label? 50% coin flip. Uh, here's the actual coin flip. We got uh, 20 voters. Wow, 50-50 split. Please add your vote if you haven't already. I expect to have results from CGC this week. So again, I feel bad for Dill uh, because this is like... Th they... Clearly, he thinks this is like a sweet, nasty score, and that's got to feel bad. Um, I, I feel bad, like him, just like my video, obviously, is going to get him upset because it's questioning the fact that it's real. Uh, I, I pretty much at that point knew that it wasn't real. Today, we're going to see that it absolutely was not real, uh, but it, it sucks. It's a, You think you got a sweet, nasty score, um, and it, it's it's not that. So I, I totally I get the uh, the emotional response. Um, and uh, defending the fact that uh, that CBC, CGC graded as an error, obstruction error, whatever you want to call it. So here we go. Here are the results. Smiley face. CGC has determined that it is a printing error. It falls under the definition of an obstruction error, which can be read about here. Occasionally, when the ink is transferred from the printing plate to the blanket, a piece of debris can get stuck to either the blanket or the sheet of cards being printed and block ink from reaching the surface of the card. So clearly that wasn't it. They're full of crap. CGC was just looking to grade something to, to be the error dogs. They wanted to be the error dogs, guys. And uh, they certainly got it in this instance. Um, now, uh, it should go without saying that if you try to like trick a grading company like this, they'll probably ban you uh, if, if it was intentional. Uh, where the people involved here, or I guess Dill and sent it in not knowing whether it was there or not it doesn't excuse the fact that the grading company should be able to recognize if it's a fake stamp if it's fake uh fake errorness uh if it's fake obstruction error th they should be able to know this stuff and if there's any questioning it on their end they should not be putting it in a slab and lending credibility to it because clearly the process that was used to figure out whether this was an error or not was not a valid one because they they failed they failed miserably on this um so I think they realized that at this point in time, and I think that's why they wanted the card back. They just wanted to get it off the market uh, rather than actual like investigate it further. Otherwise, they would have provided some kind of like data. Look, oh, here we missed this thing. We should have put it in our IR butt butt clapper machine with our robotic arms that jerk us off in between uh, <laughs> putting stuff putting stuff in plastic. All right, Josh says, someone on Instagram is claiming that they own this card and it was originally laminated and the card was damaged by removing the lamination. He still hasn't posted any pics of it being laminated, but it definitely makes the origin of this card questionable. Don't worry, guys, stay tuned. Again, this is going to be a long video, but I, I promise it's going to be worth it. You're going you're gonna to see. We're going to get absolute proof here. I was really hoping CGC would double down, but um, but they didn't. They, they know they fucked up. Jack says, seller going straight to CGC and rattle instead of Dill is playing wrong, in my opinion. They sold it to them, so it is very easy to solve. So uh, that's the thing. They did message. They didn't get a response. Uh, and, uh, and I mean, what what do you what, what else do you want? If they reached out to uh, to Dill, uh, to the person that bought it from them, asking, we're gonna we're gonna see that too. I got that in here somewhere too. Um, they did. Uh, and it's it's uh, disingenuous to, to say that they didn't. Um, and I mean, what? Who else? Who else do you reach out to other than uh, the person you sold it to, the grading company that called it an error when it isn't, and and me, who is the, maybe the biggest critic of of the grading companies to ever exist. I, I'm finally giving them like a pat on the back when they do something good, but uh, this is this is not that. Josh says, "Yeah, I found a, a this. I found this to be a bit odd too, especially since no proof was posted up front. Still waiting on proof. Um, so, all right, we, we don't worry. We got proof. I mean, we got proof within the other cards that were laminated. Uh, the fact that the the motivation behind it, saying that it wasn't an error is just non-existent. You, you got somebody that purchased a card from you at full price. All right, Dill says." 
Well, this is not how I imagined my Thursday going. I have a few comments. Yes, I did purchase the card from him. No, I do not believe that the card is worth $100,000. I listed it to draw attention to the unique error and to keep it safe at my vault. I have yet to see proof of his claims. I stand behind CGC's evaluation of the card, i.e. a third-party company that has no skin in the game. I mean, he doesn't really have skin in the game either. I don't think it... And if he gets caught lying about it, then, then he gets put on blast in... You don't reach out to me. If you did something wrong, you do not want to reach out to me. That is a terrible idea. I have to imagine that CGC has the imaging techniques to discern between preprint and postprint manipulation, including the removal of an adhesive and or other substance stuck to the surface of the card. So, I mean, I, I don't think any of the adhesive is going to be left behind. There is like, uh, for anyone that isn't, that didn't grow up in the, uh, the 90s, that isn't familiar with like lamination, there's one side that sticks that's sticky and the other side that's not. Uh, and then when you like kind of heat it up, it kind of adheres to itself, but it doesn't adhere to the, uh, the, the, the thing that you're sticking it to on one of the sides it does on the other. Uh, so I don't think it would ever get to the point that any of that lamination would stay on the card itself. I think more so it would be, what is it going to pull with it? Uh, that kind of scenario. So, Josh says, uh, the fact that Rattle, of all people, is the person immediately tagged makes me raise my eyebrows. I mean, I, I, try me. Try me, people that are trying to pull one over on someone. Uh, make sure you give me all the information. Uh, and I, I'm going gonna, gonna, to, I can tell when people are terrible liars. I'm getting too good at being able to tell when someone's lying to my face. And providing unnecessary information, all of that stuff. I've, I've seen it time and time again. I mean, the people that think that they can do it are typically too dumb to do it. I want to think that this person is being honest, but posting this kind of claim with 0% proof just feels like odd to me. Uh, oddish, I guess, pun intended. Also, knowingly selling an altered card is weird for the seller to do. So that's the thing. I, I don't know if he was purposely altering the cards like this and he was charging some like insane amount and claiming that it was an error graded by PSA. Yeah, different story. Like if he had it on there for three grand or something, even if he had it on there for a thousand dollars or something, even it was 300 or best offer graded PSA one damaged. No mention of like, look at this special Zard with all the ink I'm missing on it. Totally. Maybe error question mark dog. No, he wasn't. He was just selling a PSA 1 Charizard. Is there an argument to be made that it shouldn't have been graded because of material being removed from the card? Maybe maybe we can make that argument. Um, but at the same time, it's just like it's damaged. It's more on the damaged end of things than intentionally altered. Um, so that's it. If it, it was him that laminated it and pulled it off and then graded it, yes, totally agree. That's deceptive. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, but just having something that's damaged. It's just like if, if something was scraped up uh, and it wasn't you scraping it up, if it was just scraped up from some kid that had it at one point and he brought it to brought it to recess and he spilled his apple juice on it and then he rubbed it around on the table or something and it made a cool tornado pattern on it. Not really altered. Pulling, pulling. I'm sure there's lots of laminated cards that are being, maybe not graded. I don't know why you would grade a laminated damaged card, uh, but people want things in slabby wabbies. Don't, I don't know. I try not to judge. Right now, with no proof of it being laminated, all I can think of is my source is made it up. Uh, fuck up YouTube, something, something, something. Nachi. All right, Nachi was in there going extra hard um, on, on what's going on here. Uh, we're going to read through this. We, we got to power through this here. We gotta, we're going to end up with a long video, and I know you guys want to see the absolute 100% proof arena. Nachi says, I'm honestly surprised you're still saying it's an error card. Arguments that the card is not an error card and a timeline. We've never seen a verified error like this before. Story of Brian purchased a card from a lot and claims to have ripped off lamination from it. This is circumstantial, but very important. To note, since most people in their heads can visualize how this effect can be replicated by delaminating a card. Also, loads of cards were laminated in the 90s, and it makes sense a card like this would come from a lot purchased from a story purchased by Story of Brian. So yeah, you hear it all the time. It's just like, I laminated my cards to protect them so that when they go through the washing machine, they don't get ruined. 
I, I've heard it countless times of people laminating their cards. Seen countless examples. Uh, usually, they don't want to peel them apart because it, it typically destroys the card that is uh, is laminated. PSA initially graded the card as a PSA one. No qualifier was designated. Story of Brian sold it to Dill on April 11th, verified by Dill and Story of Brian. PSA wouldn't verify it an error. It as an error after Dill reaches out to them. Dill tries to replicate the effect with acetone. The same effect is not achieved. The further supports Story of Brian, who never claims the streaking was acetone based. Story of Brian is still in the possession of other laminated cards from the collection seen here. Arguments that the card is an error. CGC said so. I mean, that's pretty much what it comes down to with that and just like the different layers of ink being a weird thing that you usually don't see. But again, it kind of all goes back to he's got examples of the stuff that was partly pulling off. I mean, different with the Japanese cards, but still. Who has skin in the game? Dale, from the very start, has remained very adamant that this card is a unicorn and an error. I mean, there's financial incentive there. Um, and I, I get it. You don't want to. You don't want to have this error card, this designation. You think you found this Grail. You get it regret. You get, you get it graded by CGC. You want to trust. You want to believe anything that they say. Um, but you, you got to be careful with that. It, you got to know. Then goes on to list it at a ridiculous price. Bad optics overall. So the ridiculous price again. The the initial price I think is important. The the the, the later price, the $100,000 that he listed it for, I don't think that was a real $100,000 listing. I don't think the $300 uh, initial cost of the, the PSA 1 Charizard with or best offer on it was a, a deceptive thing either. So CGC verifies tons of errors that, that they have no business verifying. It's akin to baseball card exchange verifying sealed booster box cases. Understandably, they are looking to fill a gap in the market that most grading companies wouldn't dare explore. Story of Brian, yeah, same with the uh, stolen cards that they grade. Story of Brian may be angry that he sold a card to Dill that could be worth way more than he initially thought. Do I have skin in the game? Somewhat. I want to be right. But from the very start, I tried to warn people about how this error is rep replicable and should in no way give the card any added value. I'll let you all make up your mind about this. Per se, I don't need to state any more proof. Um, so we got Josh here uh, about the what would be the point? What do I gain? Uh, and he says, I would think if you're going to accuse a company of falsely authenticating a card, you would have some sort of proof. Why go to all the trouble of just open yourself up to a defamation case just seems odd to me. If you think like, I mean, even this, if you think people like, I don't know why everyone thinks defamation cases are like a real thing, uh, that, that the CGC is going to say that you're defaming them because you, you said you're claiming that you, you sold a damaged card to someone and they graded it and shouldn't have. I, I don't know. I don't know how, how, how do they even, prove that even even if brian was somehow lying here I, I i don't even i don't even know how this is even a possibility jack says i've been caught up i don't know maybe you get some like some stupid uh teachers high school teachers that teach law and then they think they can defamation case everyone still waiting for that by the way Jack2357 says I've caught up. LOL. I'm not sure how what to do from this point. Stand aside is the easy option. Josh, again, we trimmed out a lot of what is in the thread here. You can go look at the thread if you'd like to uh, for like full context, but there was a lot of uh, a lot of not so important posts that I didn't think we had to cover. There are still a lot that we need to get through, so we need to power through here. Josh's Odd Collection says, but on the other hand, the seller was not transparent about them peeling lamination off the card. For a trusted seller, surely they would be upfront about altering a card. No, that's just scummy from every angle, and I don't think you can argue about that. I mean, that, that's the thing. Are they altering it, or is it just damaged? If they're not like intending from the very beginning to like add the material to remove the material, if they're just trying to salvage a damaged card from a, a lamination that was done years ago, uh, I don't think that's quite the thing. All right, uh, we got the same one there. We got Nachi here. Uh, we got Evie Team. Evie Team saying there is zero evidence that the card was laminated, just saying it was in a post at the time. Credibility as the person that cracked a PSA 8 Moonbrion and showed the PSA label next to the new black label BGS Lab. There is no proof of either being event being true. No need to blast Dill on this when the claim just happened. Give some time for more information. 
Uh, we got Nachi who replies, if I was Dill, I would at least be agnostic about the whole thing. That's the thing he, that's rubbing me the wrong way at this point. And again, there's more evidence that it's not an error than the anecdote. Josh says, for a trusted seller, surely they would end up being upfront about altering the card. Uh, and Nachi replies, it's a PSA 1. Why would you need to justify why a PSA 1 is a PSA 1? Totally agree. All right, Josh's collection says, it's no coincidence that the card sold for 30% more than the other PSA 1 listings at the time. It sold for that price because of how unique it is. So the seller definitely made money off of it. Holy crap, man. 30% or best offer. So maybe look into the or, or best offer part of it. Um, so Nachi here showing the pictures that we looked at earlier of the laminated cards, just in case anyone hasn't seen it. I think those are kind of the, the those are kind of all you need to see uh, to go along with the story. The fact that they would have all that, just the, the amount of details that would have to line up here for them to not be, you know, to, there's just no way. There's absolutely no way. And again, end of the video here we're going to take a look at the ultimate smoking gun no questions asked evidence uh nachi saying what if cgc retracts their assignment but no lamination peel is found dill says i get what you uh you want to fight badly but you're being a bit much can you please tone it down and wait patiently until actual evidence is brought forward uh nachi saying can you take down your listing until evidence is brought forward dill says no i won't take down the listing until cgc retracts their statement that it is an error nachi says all right then don't expect me to be neutral on this in this whole thing either dill says i'm not asking you to be neutral i'm asking you to relax all right, Nachi here saying, just do the right thing and take down the listing until it's figured out. I will not continue posting if you do. I think that's a fair compromise. And before lock, PFM says, I would personally temporarily remove the listing. Then again, it's listed for 100K, so functionally it's not realistic. Anyone would buy it. I mean, I, th I think t taking it down is the right move. Uh, I get maybe you want to be stubborn and you, you really are putting your faith in the CGC thing, uh, whether that faith is in CGC because you you really financially want it to, to be what it is. Uh, you want the special thing to remain the special thing, uh, but it's, it's not going to. All right, next, Dill says, I spoke with CGC over the phone and by email. At this time, I will be sending the card from them for re-evaluation. They're keen to make things right, whether it is determined to be an error or not. So again, this is CGC trying to retrieve it so they can cover their butt. Uh, it's too late though, because I, uh, there's a video uh, and there's all kinds of kerfluff going on. Uh, we got <laughs> AP Speed saying, I guess Rattle Pokemon hasn't visited E4 in a while. I have not. To be honest, it's uh, I try to check back in there every now and then, uh, but uh, my time and resources are extremely limited. Uh, so here, I mean, I, I don't know if there was anything of uh, necessarily of value that would have been added uh, other than the, I guess, the initial. Um, I, I wasn't familiar with the initial uh, intentions of Dill. I think they were good intentions, uh, and I think he just got screwed over and he was upset about it for that reason. That's about it. Jack says, where do you even begin with this? I actually looked before you said LOL before Christmas is the answer to that. I love this stuff, but the whole thing needs sorting. EV team saying was absolutely expecting this thread to be pulled into his video. It wasn't disappointed. Well, guess what, EV team? You're in there now. Welcome to that video. Welcome to the follow-up video. Jack saying, I couldn't believe this wasn't there. So much missing context. I've left an IG message, so hopefully it can be all straightened up and move along to something else. My IG messages are an absolute wiener fire, dumpster fire to the extreme. Uh, it's best to, if you if you if if there's something very urgent, uh, then, uh, then join my Discord and, and send me a message in there. Send me a message on Discord, but also if it's like mega urgent to the extreme, uh, at me in general chat. If it's not urgent and you at me in general chat, I will not be impressed. That's about it. Admiral says, hi, Rattle. When you scroll over this post in the future video, I want you to know. Pee pee poo poo. Thank you, Admiral. I really appreciate that. Um, it was it was uh, hidden under a spoiler, but uh, we got screenshots for the sake of making this easier to present in this slideshow style video. Stagecoach says when i first read that this thread wasn't mentioned in the video i thought maybe it was an act of discretion to shield dill from any brigading which i would have respected but i'm surprised to see he genuinely does not seem to know this thread exists i didn't i don't think it's important uh it wasn't important uh i had the details that i needed 
uh, in order to make an informed decision that CGC did not make. Uh, and uh, that's that's just it. We got Moss Deep who says he's lucky. I read this thread for 10 minutes, just going in circles before I realized that I don't care. Hot take. Hot take. It's okay. We're reading the thread now. I don't, guys, I don't, I don't, I appreciate that you guys made a thread on this and discussed it, but um, we didn't need it in this case. Still appreciate it. Thank you for tagging me in it. Thank you for uh, assembling the information and making uh, guesses on whether or not this would be a real, real card, real error, real error card. Nachi saying, you are not allowed to knowingly sell fraudulent consumer goods. It is illegal and unethical. The onus is never on the buyer to do their research. The moment the authenticity of the card was seriously called into question, the listing should have been removed. That's the one bit of damage control that should have been exercised immediately. And it's not worth it to keep the listing up to draw attention to the unique error. I get it. Perhaps the tone of my rhetoric in this thread or rhetoric, sorry, was not the friendliest. But at the end of the day, we should all hold each other accountable in this community and do what's right. I think so. And I think it's totally fair if uh, if CGC decided that it was a real error. Uh, and if we didn't have the information that we're about to post or show today, then uh, then that would totally be the case. All right. Uh, Dill posting that I sent him a DM. Very cool. Here's the DM. Um, uh, and I just kind of asked. So, uh, in response, I got, you made a lot of assumptions in your first video. I would encourage you to read through the entire thread for more information and context before making a follow-up video. I mean, uh, the only part that I didn't have here was I wasn't certain on the intentions of the buyer. Uh, and I, I think we're, we're clearing that up now. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Again, I don't think any of you, and there should be no witch hunting involved in this. Uh, we should, it is a blemish on the CGC grading errors, uh, reputation, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, again, it's an important lesson for that reason. Uh, and, uh, communication with, uh, you know, I guess the, 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 the trail of who owned things beforehand is really showing once again, to be an important piece of authenticity. And, and, and once again, we got CGC is just not, not doing that. It's the same, same with anything, same with, same with the fake case, same with, same with anything that you're purchasing, especially sealed product or like strange errors and stuff like that. Um, knowing who were the previous owners, where it came from, uh, is, is very important more so than CGC putting it under a black light and coming on it. That's, that's it. Uh, so he confirms he bought it from Story Brian, cracked the card, submitted to CGC, and listed on PWCC. Uh, confirmed that uh, he was under the impression that it was actually an error. Um, was I, I said, was there any discussion about it with whoever sold it to you? And he said, there was no discussion that, that the card was allegedly altered by the seller, Story of Brian. I bought the card believing that it was a genuine error. And as you read in the thread, I have sent it back to CGC for reevaluation. So... Again, uh, I feel I feel bad for Dell, uh, who thought they had like a super grail to the extreme, um, and I mean, of course, they're going to be a little bit defensive because it's a, it's, it's a huge item that is turning out to be an, an, basically a nothing, which kind of sucks. Sigma saying you should uh, relist it at two hundred thousand uh, dollars. Nachi says bought it. I really hope I get Dell for Secret Santa this year. Dell saying maybe I will after CGC regrades it. Um, and then we had the final update. So uh, this is the most important part. Uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of upsetting to me that that CGC didn't make any kind of statement or say what and what the difference was on the second time around their second shot. Other than the fact that they had information uh, from the origin of the card, or not maybe not the origin of the card, but they had uh, the the person that removed the lamination uh, actually making a statement about it, uh, and that was shown in my video. But I, I would assume that largely their, their decision to, to remove that, uh, to have Dill send it in, was so that they could get this thing off the market because it's a blemish. It's, it's still a blemish. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea how they still have it on the website. You would think after they confirm not an error, uh, they would remove it from there because it's embarrassing. But they didn't. Dill, final update. Upon further investigation, the CGC 5.5 obstruction error Charizard was found to be altered. 
I would only have wanted to keep the card under the terms that it was regraded as authentic slash altered so that this situation would not happen again, but the authentic slash altered designation or grading the card at all was not possible at CGC. Therefore, I decided to sell the card to CGC for the original purchasing price so that it could be used for educational slash training purposes. They're so full of crap. We're going to train, <laughs> train with that. They just want it off the market. While I am disappointed that the card was not a genuine error, I am beyond pleased with CGC's quick response and professionalism and their interest in retaining the card to improve the detection of unique errors. I will note that CGC reimbursed my grading and related expenses, which I am also grateful for. Um, if there's anyone from CGC that would like to explain to me how, uh, it wasn't just uh, my video and uh, Story of Brian's uh, posts and or messages uh, that made them decide that this was no longer an error, I, please feel free to, to let me know what that process was like. All right, so a uh, little note here from Story O'Brien who says, if the dude actually asked about the card and how the damage happened, I would have told him, just like I told everyone else that was trying to buy the Japanese cards from me, I didn't try to sell it off as an error or even hit at hint at the fact that it might be one. It's a PSA 1, aka it's beyond damaged. He never haggled or contacted me. I had it up for best offer, and he bought it outright. The biggest mistake outside CGC labeling an error is still assuming it was an error. I don't know how he thinks he can blame me for altering the card. So that's the thing. Communication here, guys. Look into where you get something. I know there's probably some excitement there. You think you found something awesome. There's probably the person that you purchased it from. I mean, it kind of goes both ways here. I don't think there was it was being sold... Uh, the, he could have added in, I guess he could have added in the description that it was laminated at one point and it got pulled off and that's why the card looks like a piece of crap. Um, and then also, um, Dill, I guess, I guess like, that's the thing. If it's a $300 purchase, uh, and Dill knows that he's going to make $69 billion off of it, he's not, he wasn't going to make the hundred thousand dollars off of it, but he, if he knows he's going to make thousands of dollars off of this thing, um, is it kind of like on the buyer as well? Is, was he trying to just kind of sneak one by? He didn't want to contact the person he purchased it from uh, because they would be upset if he flipped it for a bunch of money or if it ended up being worth, I don't I don't even know, even if it was worth five grand or something, if it was the Charizard super error to the extreme, um, it, is, is that kind of deceptive? It's it's like, you know, buying buying some some chase cards off a kid that doesn't know what they're worth. I don't think there were any like terrible, terrible intentions by anyone that was involved. But I mean, it, there's there's all kinds of blame. The lack of communication um, after purchasing uh, was was I guess largely this whole thing would have just never happened uh, if if the damage was asked about. Um, and and chances are the person, even if the person, if it wasn't the person that received it, if Brian received it without the laminate on it, uh, he could have said, oh yeah, I bought it from so-and-so, uh, and you could have done a little bit more digging with something like this. I think it's worth the time and investment into, uh, finding out exactly how, it, how it became, became the way that it came. If it was like from some childhood collection, they're like, oh yeah, I pulled it like that. And it was, it looked like crap. Uh, so here's the, the screenshot of, uh, uh, the the reach out um, the reach out and said hey man were you the one who cracked this and sent it to CGC uh, so this is Brian sending out sending a message he never received a response so for anyone that was concerned uh, that Brian just didn't want to answer anything about it at any point um, there you have it that's uh, that's it that's it there was no communication between the two of them um, all right. Now, the most important part, and the part you've all been waiting for, we found, he found, Brian found, some more laminations. Do we have the Charizard? Looks like we had a couple Charizards here, a couple of the uh, Japanese ones that were peeled off, and again, uh, for whatever reason, the printing process is different with the Japanese cards, so it is pulling basically the entire uh, color off of the front, leaving just the uh, the white background. Uh, here's another one of the Charizards right here, not bad, uh, and uh, here it is. This is the smoking gun ultimate proof. Uh, this is the lamination that uh, that was present uh, that, that was pulled off in order to make this look like a damaged card. CGC did not have this information. I did. Um, and it, I, well, I guess he found them. He found the Charizards that are shown here that I just showed on screen uh, just uh, just recently as as the uh, the card was being sent back to CGC under the, you know, 
pretenses that it was gonna they were gonna check out to see if it was a real error uh, i'm still calling bs on that i think cgc just wanted it back so that they could uh, take it off the market it's a it's an easy decision for them to to pay out 300 bucks uh and uh, and not have that floating around reminding people of how incompetent they are um, but I know, I know there's going to be one more person. I know I see you in the comments. Just hold on. Uh, they're going to say what, how, maybe this is just Photoshopped rattle. Maybe, maybe they just, you know, they took a Charizard and they took an overlay. Well, you know what? It's okay. We got, we got video proof too. Here's the video proof. Um, this is it. This confirms everything. This is, I mean, it's a shame that this wasn't available from the very get go because it would have just completely quenched the argument. There's no denying it at this point. This is the missing piece. The missing pieces are front of the, the Charizard card. And again, I don't think there was anyone that was trying to deceive anyone. I think it was CGC being incompetent. I think it was Dill that should have reached out to the, uh, the seller to find out what the story was on it. Uh, I think the seller could have included information on it. But again, as a damaged Charizard, they probably didn't think anyone was going to be selling it as an error card. They didn't have it marked up to be sold at a premium like an error card would be. So th that's that's ki that's kind of it. Those ones are attached. Oh, those were those were back to back, I guess. Interesting. Maybe that's why that's why the back the back wasn't coming out. It's strange that uh, that it pulled off both though. Uh, if it was back to back. All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I know this was a long one. What are we at? 45 minutes? Yeah, we are. Sorry, guys. I just wanted to make sure we provide all of the information that uh, is, this is a learning lesson. Uh, and uh, I, th I think for everyone involved, and uh, hopefully this is at least a, a little bit entertaining. Hopefully it avoids some of this stuff going on in the future. Uh, if anything pops up like this, you got to be skeptical. You got to be very skeptical. CGC, smart the hell up. Stop grading shit that you don't even know if it's an error or not. Uh, I get it. You you want to be the niche, the niche doggers. But you're just making yourself look stupid. All right. Thank you, guys. Join my Discord, and I will see you next time.